Hey, check it out. This is the HPX300, the hot new camera from Panasonic that everyone's talking about. And you won't believe the price for a camera that offers the features of a professional interchangeable lens camera with the image quality of AVC i100. Its improved CMOS chip design called 3MOS gives it an added advantage, but image acquisition with CMOS chips means you should know about the differences between CMOS and CCD chip performance to get consistent results. CMOS chip cameras are already in the marketplace. These cameras, and the HPX300 as well, use CMOS chips that expose pixels sequentially, utilizing what's called a rolling shutter. Unlike cameras using traditional CCDs with global shutters, rolling shutters expose each pixel separately at a different time. If mismanaged, this can open the door to imaging problems. Two potential issues can arise. The first, called flash banding, is when a bright light source of a duration shorter than the overall exposure time of a single frame occurs during the shooting of a scene. Now, such a source could be a short duration flash from a camera strobe light or the flashing lights of a police car or fire engine. Since the flash duration is shorter than the entire exposure for a single image frame, only part of the frame is exposed to the bright light as the shutter rolls from pixel to pixel, causing a bright band of light to appear partially as a horizontal stripe in the frame. Uh, okay, flash banding is unavoidable. However, Panasonic is introducing a software update to the HPX300 that uses a new signal processing technology called LSI. The highly accurate flash banding detection of LSI, coupled with FBC, that's flash banding compensation, will minimize flash banding by making replacement frames from flash damaged frames and adjacent frames adjusting levels, thus making flash banding virtually undetectable. Now, the second problem is called skew. Skew occurs when the camera is panned too quickly and is visually evidenced by vertical lines that appear to gleam. So this is where you do your part. For the HPX300, this issue is more noticeable at 1080, 24 p.m. While the angle of lean increases and decreases with the speed and direction of the pan, it can be simply avoided by panning at speeds that are consistent with those used in any 24-frame acquisition to avoid the strobing of vertical lines. While smooth pans are more easily done on a tripod than shoulder-mounted or handheld, the following tips, while effective in any ergonomic mode, have added relevance for handheld use where smooth, consistent pans are difficult and the likelihood of fast camera movement is greater. Skew of the subject image will not occur if the camera is panned to track the subject, while background skew can be diminished or eliminated by limiting the amount of background image area and maximizing the subject image area, thus shortening the length of vertical lines. Other techniques that will diminish skew are selecting a shorter focal length for a wider angle of view, thus allowing faster pan speeds, and by creating shallow depth of field using larger apertures to defocus vertical lines. Of course, when possible, selection of a simplified background with no verticals will help. A very useful technique is to hide a zoom move within a pan. By starting with a longer focal length and widening out as the subject moves closer and passes quickly, a very fast pan can be achieved on a moving subject without skew, even handheld. In some instances, shortening the exposure times may reduce the amount of skew. For another effective technique, try panning right to left rather than left to right. This will greatly diminish the likelihood of skew. Of course, panning left to right may be unavoidable, so try this trick to eliminate the appearance of skew. First, test a quick pan to see how much skew is occurring at a given focal length and pan speed. Next, using the bubble level on your tripod and while looking at the LCD window on the camera, tilt your camera so that the verticals lean to the left in the same amount that they skewed to the right in your test. Now, when tracking the subject, skew in the verticals will not appear to tilt to the right and the subject image will not skew because it's tracked with the pan. In all cases, avoid abrupt stops and sharp reversals of direction and pan moves as this can create a rubbery image with the use of long focal lengths. Lastly, skew can be an asset, a creative tool used to enhance the effect of motion. Still photographers have used this technique to their advantage with focal plane shutters for many decades. In short, unlike rapid pan tripod tests that produce unusable imagery in both CCDs and CMOS chips, the real-world application of rolling shutter acquisition should pose no significant problem with professional camera management.